with a good, strong legislative framework. You can't do anything with that. Everything is fluff. If somebody come and tell you, for example, we are going to put a new policy in place, where is the law to support that policy? If there is no law, it is fluff. Great minds think alike, they say. The article, EU moves one step closer to being able to cut visa-free access for CBI countries, published by IMI, reveals that Dr Drew and the EU are on the same page. Without law, it is all fluff and therefore the EU is taking the necessary steps to bring into law the mechanism to swiftly shut down Caribbean CBI programmes if there is a breach. The article is narrated by Alvarine and Carissa Cable of KN Whoop. The article reads, In October last year, IMI reported that the European Commission had announced proposals that, if enacted, would allow it to add the operation of a citizenship by investment programme as one of the valid grounds for suspending the visa waiver agreement between such countries and the Schengen area. This week, the Commission moved one step closer to making this a reality. The current visa suspension mechanism allows for the suspension of the visa waiver agreement if the country displays number 1. A substantial increase, more than 50%, in the number of people arriving irregularly from visa-free countries – including people found to be staying irregularly and persons refused entry at the border. Number two, a substantial increase, more than 50%, in the number of asylum applications from countries with low recognition rates, around 3 to 4%. Number three, a decline in cooperation on readmission. Number four, an increased risk to the security of member states. The Commission's proposal in October was to add another three conditions to the list of transgressions, that would allow for visa waiver suspensions. Firstly, lack of alignment of a visa-free third country with the EU's visa policy, in cases where this may lead to increased arrivals to the EU, for example, because of this country's geographical proximity to the EU. Secondly, the operation of an investor citizenship scheme, whereby citizenship is granted without any genuine link to the third country concerned, in exchange for predetermined payments or investments. And thirdly, hybrid threats and deficiencies in document security legislation or procedures. In a press release this week, the European Council revealed the ambassadors of the EU member states, the Committee of Permanent Representatives, have agreed on a common position on the matter, including the addition of CBI programme operations as an offence that can warrant visa suspensions. It is just like in the last go-around with Unity, when there was some Charlestown Accord. And the then Prime Minister said, this does not have any groundings because it was not law. And therefore, what we are doing is creating the legislative foundation and framework for all of this to happen. You have a board now. You have all these legislative changes that anybody want to touch them, they have to go in to the parliament. And so it's a process. This new law, said the statement, when adopted, will boost the EU's toolbox to counter situations when visa-free travel is being abused or works against the interests of the EU. What happens next? Now that the European Council is on the same page with regard to updating the visa suspension mechanism, it can enter into negotiations with the European Parliament. If the Council and Parliament agree to a final text, both institutions will formally approve it, whereupon it would be signed into law and published in the official journal of the EU. It then becomes the law across the EU, independently of existing legislation in the individual member states. Which countries would be affected? Effectively, all countries outside of the EU Schengen that currently enjoy visa-free travel to the zone, essentially the same as those who will soon be subject to the new ETAS requirements, notably including all five Caribbean CBI countries. This week's development contrasts with the more conciliatory tone the EU reportedly took during its meetings with Caribbean CBI countries in January. In other words, Prime Minister Dr Drew, he who pays the piper calls the tune. CBI revenue of Caribbean countries, including the Federation of St Kitts and Nevis, has accounted for more than 50% of GDP. With that in mind, the EU is demonstrating that St Kitts and Nevis will indeed dance to their hymn, or the music will be no more.
Thank you for joining us on KN Whoop. I am Alvarine Cable, affectionately known as Bright Eyes. Have a wonderful day.